Today in the MarinaReef.com budget tank build series, we're going to be talking about long-term water testing. Now you may be asking yourself, what do you mean long-term water testing? Well, this is what I'm talking about. In a previous video, we talked about cycling the tank and initial testing. So when you first set up your aquarium, you want to make sure that the salinity is correct. You want to make sure that the temperature is correct. And then you want to monitor the ammonia and nitrite levels to see them spike up and drop down to zero to know that your cycle is complete. However, after that's done and you have fish in the tank like we do, there's different things you're going to want to monitor. So we're still going to recommend you look at that thermometer periodically, especially as the seasons change to see if things are heating up um, a little too much or cooling off a little too much. We're going to recommend that you test the salinity of your aquarium. Every time you do a water change, just test that new batch of water to make sure it's correct and is matching the water in the tank. But the ammonia and nitrite, you really don't need to monitor anymore. They should pretty much be at zero unless something very, very, very bad happens. And you're going to know that is really bad because the fish are going to tell you they're going to be not looking super happy. So the question is, what are you monitoring in the long run to make sure that the tank is staying happy? That's going to be nitrate, phosphate, and alkalinity. Now there are a lot of tests beyond this, but at this point in the tank, these are really the three that you should be doing to check up on things. So the first two of those tests are going to be your nitrate and phosphate, and that's NO3 and PO4. Now these are basically your nutrient parameters. So the ammonia and nitrite we measured earlier is a nutrient parameter, but the bacteria in most aquariums keep those levels very low. Once everything's established, you should really never see either of those in any test kit ever again, unless something bad happens once again. But you are gonna generally see the nitrates and phosphates slowly creep up. So people often ask, what levels are we wanting to see? For me personally, I'm wanting to see nitrate levels below 20 ppm and phosphate levels below one ppm. If they're in that range, I'm generally okay. And the other thing that's a little bit more advanced, but I'm going to mention it here, is generally the phosphate level should be one one hundredth of your nitrate levels. So if you see a nitrate level of 10, that means that you should be receiving a 0.1 phosphate level. Um, generally that ratio tends to give you fewer algae problems than if they're out of whack. So you may find that they're both in acceptable ranges, but if they're not at that 100 to 1 ratio, you may get a little bit more algae problems. Then the third test is going to be alkalinity. Now alkalinity is kind of a difficult thing to explain to people. The best way I can describe it is if you're familiar with what pH is, pH is the ratio of acid to base in the aquarium water. Alkalinity is the amount of base in the aquarium water. So an example of this could be if you had a water sample with a neutral pH of 7, had one acid molecule and one base molecule, it would have a neutral pH but a very low KH or alkalinity level. If you could imagine the same water sample with one billion acid molecules and one billion base molecules, the pH would still be neutral, but you would find that the alkalinity would be much higher because there's a lot more base in the water. Now, what we're really interested in when we measure alkalinity or KH is the carbonite ion concentration. And the main reason behind that is that when we put corals in the tank, they're calcium carbonate based. So they put calcium and carbonate together to make their skeletons, as do snails and any crustacean. They're extracting minerals out of the water to build their shell. And generally the parameter that's easiest to measure how those minerals are doing in the water is KH or alkalinity. Now for this point in the, um, the tank, we don't have any corals in yet, so we're kind of going to get a baseline for what our alkalinity value is. And then once we add corals in, we're going to see that alkalinity slowly start to drop down as those corals start to grow and extract it from the water. Once we notice it dro drop substantially, we'll give you guys a follow-up video on dosing the aquarium. But as far as knowing when you need to start dosing, it's all about monitoring the alkalinity, noticing when it starts to drop, and that's the sign that you're going to have to start replacing those trace elements. Now, when it comes to testing these three parameters, I'm going to show you guys what I'm using. I am using um, HANA checkers, and I'm going to throw some disclaimers out here. 
Hannah checkers are more expensive than a Salifert test or Red Sea test or Seachem test or whatever other brand, but they're very easy to read, particularly for people like me who have color blindness and have had eye surgeries. The digital readouts are very nice to read. But the other advantage is you buy the checker once and then the reagents are very affordable. So while you may spend $30 or $35 on a test kit and then have to buy a new test kit once you run out of tests, with the HANA checkers, you're probably spending about double that, but the reagents may be half of what a comparable test kit would be. So maybe you're spending $15 on extra reagents instead of $30 or $35 on a whole new test kit. So that does lower the cost over time. The last thing I'll mention is just the frequency of testing. So we talked about the thermometer, just occasionally glance at it. The salinity, test it when you do your water change. I'm gonna recommend when you just start out and you're in the phase we're in, you really only need to test alkalinity about twice a month, maybe about every other week, just to give you a baseline. And once you notice it dropping, you may wanna test it more. Same thing with nitrate and phosphate. I'm gonna recommend that you only test those about twice a month. They start climbing up. You may need to take some action, like some more water changes and monitor it a bit closely. But just for getting a baseline, I'd say about every two weeks or so is perfectly fine. Now, without further ado, we're gonna show you guys what a test looks like with this aquarium using the HANA checkers. So we're gonna start by showing you guys this HANA alkalinity test, and really the nitrate and phosphate aren't much different. We'll mention the differences as we do this test. So you can tell this is a test kit that is well used all around the office, and I even use this at home as well. You're gonna get in the packaging a um, actual checker or tester, Basically what this device is, is we're gonna put in some water and a reagent, and then it's gonna shoot a light through it, and that light is gonna read the color so our eyes don't have to, and then we'll get a digital reading. So the first thing we're gonna do with any of these HANA test kits is you're gonna pull one of the included vials out, and then I like to use um, an eyedropper, or you can also use a syringe. Um, those are included in some of the kits, but not others. You can just dunk the vials in. Then I'm gonna to go to the aquarium, and usually what I do is I completely dunk the vial and then pull it out. That's basically just to make sure that the vial is coated in aquarium water versus tap water or whatever I rinsed it with. Then I'm gonna use my dropper or again, you can use a syringe. All right, so we got our vial filled with water. Now I'm gonna use the trusty marineandreef.com cleaning towel just to dry it off. We don't want it having any water on the outside when we put it into the checker. Then on the checker itself, we're gonna turn it on. It's telling me the batteries are a little low, but it's still running. Now it's gonna say C1. And for this step, we're gonna drop the vial inside of the checker. I try to orient the vials the same way every single time. So in this case, I'm putting the logo and measurement towards the front. And you're just gonna close it and press the button. And what the checker's doing now is it's getting a baseline reading for what the sample looks like with um, just regular tank water. Then we're gonna add the reagent to it and it's gonna give us a reading for what it looks like after we put that reagent in. So now we're gonna go ahead and take the reagent out. Give it a nice rub again. Open it up, open up the reagent bottle. Included with the kit is a little syringe for measuring. In this case, it is one milliliter. So I've got one milliliter measured. We're gonna squirt it into the vial. Put our cap back on. Close up the reagent nice and tight. You do really wanna make sure this reagent is sealed very tightly. If any leaks out or if it starts to evaporate, it can actually give you incorrect readings. And with the alkalinity reagent, we only need to shake this a couple times. It's very fast. I believe it's 30 seconds to a minute is what the instructions specify. For some of the other tests like the nitrate and phosphate, they will say shake for a full two minutes. So I would recommend you do that just to make sure it's very, very well dissolved in there. Then we're gonna give it another wipe so it's nice and clean. 
we're gonna pop the vial back inside the checker and we're gonna press the middle button again. And it's giving us a pretty low reading for alkalinity right now. Um, this is um, about five, which is um, lower than I think. It could be that there's a lot of algae in there consuming it, um, but that's a good baseline to get an idea of where we're at and we can check it over time to see what happens. Now, the only difference between the nitrate and phosphate checkers is that they're gonna use powdered reagents instead of liquid. And that's actually a little bit more accurate because you have no problem with any of the liquid evaporating off, which could skew your results. However, those are gonna be a little bit more work to open. You have to use a pair of scissors and then pour that powder in and shake it. And the other difference is when you go to test it, it doesn't give you the result immediately. You press and hold the button, and then it has a countdown timer that waits, I believe, about three minutes for the phosphate test and I think six for the nitrate, and then it will display the reading. So it's very simple. It's just one reagent that you put in there to get your results, and then that's going to let you get a value in a digital readout that's easy for you to understand. Thank you very much. Hopefully everything makes sense. Once you get your water tested, just look for those numbers in the ranges we specified, see how they change over time. And once we see some changes, we'll give you guys some follow-up videos to show you guys what we do when the nitrates and phosphates start to climb up or what we do when the alkalinity starts to get sucked down over time.